My thoughts and my energy rise up to touch the sky. On your next inhale, go ahead and lift the arms all the way up towards the heavens. Open up the eyes. Let your right hand fall gently down to the floor and swerve to the upper body. It's okay if you're still leaning against the wall. It's okay if you're away from the wall, but see if that arm can come out of your peripheral line of view instead of hanging forward in front of the face. If your shoulder is not able to create that rollback, just do your best and leave that out. On your next inhale, bring yourself back to the top. Go ahead and rainbow over so you're landing on the left hand, pouring over to that side. Right arm up overhead. Taking that arm out of your peripheral view if possible. Reaching up and out through the fingertips and affirming here as you hold strength and courage. Feel up my body cells. On your next inhale, gently come all the way up. I would suggest bringing your blocks back and your bolster up for our next position. This is actually going to be from a standing position, and you can use the wall here, stacking onto the soles of the feet with your heels just a few inches away from the surface or the baseboard. We're going to lift up through the crown of the head, and as we exhale, we're going to start to fold forward, and you'll feel when you tip forward, your sits bones touch the wall, and this is where the bolster can come in handy. You can stand the bolster up and place the head there and let the arm, arms hang free. If you want to go lower, you might be able to take the blocks to stack and allow the head to rest here instead. So don't think of it as finding necessarily the edge of your hamstring stretch, since this can be more restorative. You don't have to go as deep in the pose. Find a level of comfort in your body. Since we're going to be holding in stillness for a number of minutes. You do not have to lock the legs in place. It's okay to have a soft bend in your knees if that feels better and more appropriate. Now, if you find there's just excess weight underneath your brow, and you want to dip lower at some point, feel free to take that extra opportunity. Otherwise, simply be here. I want you to listen to the mantra in the background. One of the main phrases is Agave Name. 
I bow to the wisdom within. There's another mantra we often use is in four folds, and it's on the mode, Name, very similar to this one, which means I bow to the teacher within. I bow to the creator of all. So when you're holding these restorative positions today, consider these mantras. Consider going within to reconnect to your higher self. Reconnecting to source energy. If this becomes difficult, try extending out your exhalations. Promote patience as the tightness and tension begins to unravel. A few more breaths. Slowly take your hands to the prop your head's been resting on. You have your blocks. You're going to stand them underneath your hands. It's okay to bend the knees. And you're going to walk the heels back towards the baseboard of the wall. You're extending your spine out in front of you. And you're going to bend your left knee. Right leg straight. Left knee has a deeper bend. And then you're going to open up into a twist. Taking the right arm skyward. Tailbone reaching towards the wall. Left hand helping you to stabilize. And right hand reaching upward towards the sky. Good. Exhale, lower the right hand down. Straighten out your left leg. Bend your right knee. Stabilize with your right hand. Then twirl open to your left. Cleansing out the body by wringing it out. Exhale, lower the left hand down. You're going to use the box to stabilize. You're going to step your feet to the wood floor wider than your sticky mat. And if you're at home and don't have a wall space, you can do this solo. And this may be where you want to be, just having your legs and buttocks flush against the wall, spine extending forward and out, heart shining forward. If you wanna go any lower, you can test the waters and maybe take the block to a lower height or remove it all together. If you have a tendency to have vertigo, I would not suggest dropping the head any farther down. But if you have the flexibility and want to hang the head, you can let go in your arms and bow down with your upper body. Pick one, be here, and breathe. If you bow your head, you're welcome to soften the elbows to hinge more from your hips. Using the wall for support. Krasarita Padotanasana.
If you've been bowing down, go ahead and step back onto your arms and hands, re-lifting the head and the heart, maybe taking the blocks to a taller height to heel, toe the feet, or to step them back together. And then bring one block with you. And I think we're all gonna have room for this. You're gonna turn so that your left side body is against the wall, but you're stepping back away from your mat. We're gonna do one more standing pose against the wall and then we're gonna come to the floor. Your left hand's gonna hold the block and you're gonna stack it on the sticky mat. Your foot is a few inches away from the wall so that when you lean your left hip and shoulder to the wall, you can use it to roll open, flexing the right foot and flying the right hand up. This is a very gentle variation of half moon. Yeah. Yeah, but you're good. You're good. That's it. So when you guys are ready to come down, come down. And Denny, Pat, Patty, do you hold it long enough or do you want to? No, this is okay. Okay, go ahead, Denny, if you want. No, good. Okay. You guys are a little stacked. And then we'll take the block in the right hand, right side against the wall. And the foot is a few inches away, but the block is going to be on the mat touching the wall so that when you come down, you're leaning your right shoulder and hip against it and elevating the left hand and leg. If you're at home and you don't have wall space, you may have a chair close by and the hand can rest on a chair to make it more restorative. We're rolling open, trying to find a little levity, a little lightness in the mix of the action. All right, when we're ready, slowly bring it down. All right, now we're gonna do legs up the wall. So to get into this pose, so if you're at home, you don't have a wall, you can put legs up a chair. Basically, you come to the corner of the mat, you scoop your tailbone right up to the surface, you lower down to one side of your body to roll back. The legs lift up. If your hamstrings are too tight and this is uncomfortable, you can shimmy back a bit. If you roll to the floor and you're not quite flush to the wall, but you're open enough to be, you can shimmy forward. Now check in with your head and your neck. See if you need a blanket. I'll get <laughs> And if you do, we'll slide it up underneath. And I can walk around and bring you yours if you need it. So you actually look good, but do you want yours? Mm -hmm. You need it, Jen? Your yeah. neck looks good, though. And just make sure your body's not crooked. I'm walking around to make sure that you're not. Yeah. Either, either chest and head this way or hips this way. Either way. Just did it. Here we're in Vaparita Karani, and the arms can be anywhere. Some people prefer hands on the belly, others prefer a frame. And some like them overhead.
Come down to your back. And occasionally check in with your feet. There are several energetic pathways that begin or end here. And with them being elevated, you may begin to feel some sensation. So this is good for our circulation. And it can be a natural sedative for the mind. Just be at peace and take rest here. Witness the stream of your breath flowing in, flowing out. And allow the ebb and the flow of the breath to work at a more organic pace. Less controlled or contrived and less need to control it to slow the mind down.
firm, quietly within, new peace, new consciousness is flooding down and through my being. And then we're slowly going to slide the feet apart into a wide straddle. So if you're at home and you don't have a wall, you can sit upright, create the, this position for the legs, create stone hinge in front of you, and then rest your arms and head on that prop. Otherwise, use the wall for support. This is a variation of Konasana wide angle. In the end, they call it butterfly, not butterfly, dragonfly. how gravity is our assistant. At some point or another, you may have enough tension dissolve. You may have enough gravity pulling you down that a foot or another may slide. Open you up a little bit more. Try not to resist that. If this is your tender or weaker area for the inner thighs, if your legs start to tremble or if it begins to become too intense, you're welcome to slide the legs back together. Or you can draw one heel in towards the pubic bone and just focus on one leg being extended. Just be sure if you focus on extending one leg that you eventually swap to the other. We'll probably only hold it about 10 more breaths. If your legs are still wide open, we're going to slide the feet now together, keeping the knees fanned open and apart. 
robotic announcement or butterfly position. Knees apart, feet together, feet stacked to the wall. Since we're in butterfly pose, I want you to imagine that surrounding your body, you're being cocooned by a beautiful, white, protective, healing, and loving light. Imagine you're surrounded by a protective, healing and loving light. There was this cool moment in uh, Utah when we were hiking through this long cave or tunnel called the Belly of the Dragon. And we were at this part of the cave where it was really dark. And when we rounded the corner, we could begin to see the light on the other side. And a couple of us grabbed our camera. And we saw this orb like dancing around in the cave. And it was bright green. So imagine you're surrounded by this orb of light. It may start off as white, but it may change colors. If it changes colors in your mind's eye, remember the color. And then look up the symbology of the color later. Take a few more breaths here. If your feet slid down closer towards the baseboard, slide the feet up the wall, turn your knees towards uh, the center, and come back to legs up the wall, straight up, legs together. Now take your left ankle and slide it down to the top of your right thigh. This may be enough for you. If this is enough, be here. Otherwise, you're just going to slide your right heel just a couple inches down the wall. You're not going to go very far. Just to deepen the stretch in your hip. To feel that work, even moving into the buttocks. Keep your low back anchor down. So if your low back's wanting to curl away from the floor, just slide the right leg back up and that crossing will be enough. Fan your arms out like a T this time. Palms flipped open to the heavens. If you don't have the room available beside you for this action, you can take the goddess arms or goalpost arms.
All right, let's slide the right foot all the way up and let's slide the left foot up to join. And then slide your right ankle bone down to your left thigh bone. And again, check in, this may be plenty. You feel the call to do a little more, slide your left foot down the wall. That will take it deeper, but listen to your body. Check in with your breath to make sure the breath is still a wide open channel. Listening to the mantra, I bow to the wisdom, the great primal wisdom. All right, we're gonna do a final twist next. There's a couple different ways you could do this twist at the wall. So one way would be to straighten up the legs again and just let them slide off to the left, all the way down past the baseboard to the floor. And your arms still splayed out like a T. This is called alligator pose. Now, if the straight leg feels like it's too much, you could softly bend your knees. Pick one of those formations. And then let your head turn towards the left shoulder. This is also one of those poses where if your feet didn't land, gravity may eventually call them down and they may perhaps slip or slide. You just go with the flow instead of resisting. We're going to slowly turn the head to center, slide or walk the feet back up the wall. Reset here for a moment with Bhaparita Prani. 
And then we'll take the legs over to the right. So just let them slide down. Taking that twist through your low back and belly. And then if that feels like it's too much, of course, bend your knees. That may feel better. Sometimes even stacking a block or bolster in between the legs can be helpful. And you're welcome to turn your head to the right shoulder if you turned it to the other side before. Instead of coming back to reset the legs at the wall, we're going to reset our back in Stonehenge. So keep your head turned right and just roll that left arm over to the right side. You can bend your knees, push down into your left palm to come up. And this is where we'll set up for our final resting position. And I'm going to turn the overhead lights off too. To set up Stonehenge, it's just like it sounds, although this reminds me of all the uh, arches in the Red Rocks out west, too. So we'll set this up. We'll scoot a little closer so that the crease of the knees is at the edge of the prop. And then, of course, you can stay stationed on your back and your arms can take any shape of your life. If you enjoy this pose, remember this is very similar to instant Maui that we often do with our calves up on a chair. It's usually the first position we get into when we do a series called the Magic Four. So we've been listening to this same mantra by two different artists on repeat today. This is a powerful mantra used for protection to gain mental clarity and to receive guidance from one's higher self. 
the mantra creates a protective field of energy around the person, attracting abundance to help them live out their destiny. This is why I was asking you to imagine that you're cocooned and surrounded and protected by a field of loving and healing energy. The full mantra translates to me, I bow to the primal wisdom. I bow to the wisdom throughout all the ages. I bow to the truest wisdom, to the great unseen wisdom. So I'm going to turn it up a notch so that you can listen and absorb.
Music turns down, turn the volume of your breath up. And then eventually draw the knees and towards your upper body. It's okay if the props collapse. Give yourself a bear hug. And sway gently on your back. Roll over to one side and then join me in the seat. So we're going to do a little pranayama in seated mountain, that first pose we started with. So as you inhale, take the arms up overhead and place your palms together over your crown. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Pull the belly in and up and hold the breath briefly. And then exhale, let the breath go. Do that twice more. Inhaling. Drawing the belly in and up and then retain it. Now release it. One more. Breathing in, holding at the top. Now let it go. As you let it go, let your hands come down to your chest. Let your head bow towards your heart. May we all walk away from this practice with a renewed sense of hope, trust, and faith. May we walk away with this orb of light surrounding our body, giving us protection and healing light. The light in me honors and bows to the beautiful radiant light of all of you. Namaste. Namaste. I will say,